Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining Prop Talk, a property management podcast that's powered by Resman, an Inhabit company. I'm Elizabeth Francisco. I'm the CXO of Inhabit, and I am your host for today's episode. And actually, today's episode is special because we are having part two of our interview with Stephanie Graves. And uh, in case you missed the first one, please go back and check it out. It was the entrepreneur's journey, and there were a multitude of nuggets about the realities of starting a business, what it takes. And I think if we were to wrap that up, we both kind of had an off-camera or off-mic conversation. Um, Not everybody is cut out to do a startup. Having realistic expectations about what it's going to take and the amount of sacrifice is important. So please check it out. She had wonderful words of wisdom. But the one thing we didn't talk about, and we hinted, we might have talked, I think we talked about the gala, but you have other responsibilities on top of running your successful business, and that is as the current HAA president. Yes. Woo! The largest department <laughs> association in the universe. The yes. largest department association <laughs> in the universe. And she's not kidding. <coughs> Excuse me. Which, once again, we're going to just go ahead and go there, you know. A-A-G-D, A-A-T-C, just saying. <laughs> I know that's a sore subject, but I couldn't help myself. Yeah. Not for so, Houston. No, I know. <laughs> They're like, oh, well. <laughs> but I really wanted to take some time to have a, a good discussion and dive into engaging in the associations. Um, one of the things we, we talked about earlier was that, you know, at least for myself, I'm, I'm definitely a product of the associations. I started as a frontline temp. Um, a leasing agent, and I worked my way up. I was able to work my way up because of the uh, association, the classes that were afforded to me at my local AAGD, which is where I started, mm-hmm. um, TAA and NAA. Um, and I built a career out of that, and a career that translated into technology because yeah. of this industry. And I'm very passionate about, you know, wanting to be involved in, and I want to see this continue. And as, as our industry continues to change, I just, I want to make, I want, I really hope and pray we don't lose sight of training our people, engaging with people, um, supporting our industries with our, our, not just our membership dues, but our PAC donations to protect the industry as well so that other people are afforded that same career opportunity because it was wonderful for me and I'm very passionate and I love our industry. Um, but with that said, at one point, I think I told you I was a fangirl because when I was a young, <laughs> young manager <laughs> back in the day, I remember going to the the local association uh, meetings and I'm like, someday I want to do that. And I had no clue what it took. And I, and I don't think I, I, was, I didn't do it. So I still don't know that I know what it took. Um, but I wanted to take a time to talk about your role, um, you know, how you came about being an, an HA president. What did that journey look like? Um, so we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about what your goals are for HAA. Okay. Um, and so let's just dive in. Like first and foremost, how did this happen? Yeah. <laughs> how did a, you how did you get there? <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a great question. Um I I have to say I, I never really was like I want to be president of the apartment association. Like I know that people have come up to me even people that are kind of my own age and been like, "Wow, I, you know, I that's on my bucket list." And it was never on my bucket list. It was not and I don't mean that like mainly, but it, it wasn't like I didn't look at I thought, yeah, this is cool. But I didn't even really understand like being on the board or I was involved with the Houston Apartment Association simply because of education. OK, um, I had a bug for education. I wanted to be a teacher. And that was my it was, you know, self self-serving. Mm-hmm. I liked education. I thought it was important. I knew things. And I also believe that, you know, you know something when you can train it. Yes, And so it helped me be better at what I did because it solidified my information when I taught it to someone else. Yep. And so it really was like education for me is self-serving. Mm-hmm. I, I feel good to tran- transfer the information. I like seeing the light bulb go off in people's, you know, and when, when you, when they learn something new, um, it's a little bit of an ego for, for, you know, it's entertainment and, and I like it when people like to hear, you mm-hmm. know, my experiences, um, so that was how I entered the apartment association arena. I started with education and really working to train leasing classes. Okay. So that's how you started. Yep. So did you reach out to them? Did you, I'm like, literally yeah. how, how do you do, how did you get into a position of doing education for HAA? So it started, I think the first thing I attended was, um, a community involvement, like, um, a, a fun run or something okay. of that nature. And then I was a trainer for my, for the company I was working for. 
And I saw that there was a leasing class. And so it kind of just was like, oh, well, if you're looking for anybody, I could, you know, I train leasing here. And they were like, yes, of course we're looking for someone. And so um, I need to stress that is you've got to let people know what your interest is. Mm -hmm. And in also in doing that, knowing if it's good for you or not, right? Mm -hmm. Like there are lots of people that think they want to be trainers and that I've recommended. And then they go teach a class and realize, oh, no, this is not at all what I want. So auditing a class is super important. If mm -hmm. you go attending a class and then partnering with someone is important. And that's what we're working with with HAA to grow future leaders is not just throwing them in a class to train, but having them audit a class or partner teach is mm -hmm. super important. So if yes. you can find a partner, and I don't want to say a mentor, but a partner mm -hmm. that you can work with and that you you gel with in that is good. So I attended something, did my first like leasing 101 class is kind of where you start mm -hmm. getting the curriculum, going through it. Um, I did have some experience in education, so I understood that premise, okay. um, you know, what you expect, what you're going to go through, those sorts of things. So, mm -hmm. um, so then that kind of just started my journey with the apartment association. And I don't, I hate to say this, but I don't really remember where it turned into more of that. Okay. Like I just kind of started taking on more classes that they needed. Mm -hmm. Um, I was available when, when they needed people to help. And so, um, worked with the director of education at the time and, um, and you know, I don't, I remember getting a call where someone asked me if I would be on the board it was Jackie Roan mm -hmm. uh, with Gray Star, legend. And I remember getting the call, not knowing who it was, and hearing, Stephanie, this is Jackie Roan. And I was like, oh, my God. Or like, <laughs> what did I do? <laughs> right? What did I do? I thought, what did I do? And she <laughs> said, you know, we're we're interested in asking you to be on the board. And, I, and the first thing I said was, are you sure? Like, because from what I've heard – you know, there's, there are some politics involved and mm -hmm. there are some people that have been doing this for a very long time. And I sometimes am considered someone that speaks my opinion in a polite way, but are you sure that's really, you know, what you want? And she said, yes, absolutely. That's why we want you on the board because we want some young blood. So, okay. so um, when you talk about getting on the board uh -huh. for, for people who yes. see it, but don't know how it works, yep. is it, um, you come in as a, a certain role yeah. as a board member? Is there like a starting role? There is. There's like, a, and I don't know what it's, that's awful that I don't know what it's called, <laughs> but it's like an advisory board member. So it's okay. like a test drive. They say, hey, we're, we want you to kind of come to the board meetings. You're a non-voting member mm -hmm. and you have some obligations. You have to show up to meetings. You have to have mm -hmm. a, a certain level of commitment. And there are, I don't know how it works in other organizations, but you know, the idea is, is that we want a mixture of people on the board that can involve their companies, mm -hmm. right? I mean, that's the idea is that, yeah. you know, sometimes we seek people out that have a major company of 2,000 units and maybe 50 or 60 employees, and we've never seen them at an organization, at a, at a meeting or at an event, but we see that they're taking on. And we we want them to understand the importance of, of the association mm -hmm. and to share their knowledge, yep. right? And so there are times when the apartment association will see a, an organization growing and be like, Hey, why don't you come to association meetings? Mm -hmm. Why don't you find that, you know, a, an association can benefit you. And so a lot of what we do is education, okay. educating membership on what's important. Um, one of the campaigns we're really working on this year, which is important to me is return on investment for the association, your membership in the association. And so mm -hmm. what are you getting as a member besides a lease on being part of the association. And we're really working on what that means for you. What do we do for you? Um, yeah. I think the struggles that we had with COVID really opened that up. Like lots mm -hmm. of people were like, what happened? You know, there's this moratorium on eviction. Where's National Apartment Association in fighting for our rights? And thought, mm -hmm. you know, so that really opened the eyes of people realizing that they wanted more from the association membership and mm -hmm. not even realizing what that means. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. What does it mean to be a member of the association? What, is, you know, besides me going to meetings or going to a chili cook off, yeah. what do I get from that? Yep. No, mm -hmm. that's an important point. One of the things it's interesting at um, Resmania, we did this last year at our, our inaugural event. We had a legislative session, mm -hmm. which I don't know that a, most user tech conferences do that. Right. But part of why it was really important for us to do it is. I was really surprised over time as we branched out of Texas because, okay, I'm a TA lease gal. I'm just going to own it. Yes. <laughs> That's all yes. I grew up on. Um, but when we branched out, I realized how many of our customers were not active members of their associations because they had their own leases. Yes. And on top of that, that meant they were also not contributing to PAC. Mm -hmm. And it was really eye-opening to me. Um, you know, unfortunately, as I was coming up through the ranks, I didn't participate at the legislative level. I wasn't aware 
um, I, I went to a lot of different classes, but for whatever reason, our, our legislative challenges didn't filter down into my level yeah, early on in my career. Still a struggle. Yes. Uh, well, we can definitely talk yes. about that because that's part of why we, I, I want to make sure we have that at Resmania because mm -hmm. we need to educate our front lines and our middle managers who are voters. But I think the bigger takeaway I had was look at all this work and how much effort and time and money is going into protecting our markets, allowing us to do business and provide quality housing. So key part of what, what you're saying is, you know, that engagement and getting more people involved. And I'd love that you guys are doing the education. Mm -hmm. um, so when you came in as an advisor, um, do you start on, because there's multiple committees, I'm mm -hmm. guessing, right? Mm -hmm. For yeah. HA. Yeah. I've, I've never been a member. Well, I think we're technically a member of HAA, but most you of are. my engagement's been yes. AGD um, or in a, NAA and TAA. Um, and did you participate on various committees before you were asked to be an advisor? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So there's education committee, community uh, community investment, there's resident relations. So mm -hmm. various committees, some of them are open and you can attend as whatever meetings you want. Mm -hmm. Some of them are um, invitation only, kind of mm -hmm. depends. Like, you know, the legislative committee is more of a board member situation, yeah. but um, education is more of a council, but that's now become open. So um, the key is um, asking, right? Like, say, mm -hmm. I'm interested in being involved. What does that mm -hmm. look like? And sometimes that's, that's challenging because, you know, I, there are still committees that I go to and I'm, I'm the president of the association for Pete's sake. And there are still committee meetings that I go to. And I feel like, I don't want to say an outsider, but you feel like these people have been working together forever. Mm -hmm. You know, they've been on Chile committee forever or expo committee forever, whatever the committee is. And you know, like, I'm kind of like, I'm coming into this click. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think we're doing a better job of, of opening up, but it's, I truly believe it's not on purpose. I do too. I don't think it it's is. It's not on purpose. It's just like with any organization, mm -hmm. right? You get in the, the scheme of things of getting things done and you don't realize that there's somebody else in the room. Yep. And so it's not for lack of wanting people to come. Um, it's not for lack of wanting to grow. It's simply, um, a lack of, of, of knowledge, right. Of, of, of noticing that that's happening. Yep. Mm -hmm. And I think. Would would you agree with, well, let me just ask this. I want to assume. Um, coming up and getting and being engaged with the association, whether it was education or serving on the committees um, and then becoming an advisor, how how do you feel like that has shaped or impacted your business acumen for multifamily or your domain expertise? Like, mm -hmm. how does how does those two things tie together? It is instrumental in your knowledge and growth in the industry. Whatever industry you're in, if people are listening and are in packaging, who knows? Getting involved and in seeing other professionals in the industry, either supplier partners or that go through the same day to day challenges you do, and making those connections has been instrumental in my growth as an individual and in my company and with the association. You don't know what you don't know. And there are many people that have been with their organizations or companies for 10 years, which is great, but you're not learning anything different about the industry if you're only working for one yep. company. And I don't, certainly don't want people to job hop, but I, if you build a network and you start talking to other people that mm -hmm. are doing the same thing you're doing in a different realm, your knowledge grows and you mm -hmm. become more marketable, more employable, um, more knowledgeable, you know, more well-rounded, and you become more important to your organization. Amen. And yeah, many <laughs> companies don't see that and they see it as a threat. I'm going to send someone to the apartment association training or a meeting and they're going to meet other people and they're going to leave me. Well, that could happen. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But are we taking care of business that we need to? And if they are leaving, it's because you're not meeting some need they have. So, okay. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, oh, well, like I send all of all of my managers are required to take CAM within the first year. Required to take CAM. Oh, wow. That's certified apartment manager. Yep. Because it's that important. And I know that they're going to be exposed to other people. And I know that there's going to be people looking for them. And they're going to think that's great. And I've lost some managers. And so it's just a risk that I'm willing to take because I don't want people that don't know the industry. Yeah. Right? Yes, I want to program them and get them the way I want. But how do you know if anything's wrong that we're doing or anything's better if you're not exposing yourself to more things? Yep. So, you know, there are some people that don't Diversity want that. of thought. Absolutely. Across a variety. Yes. I am families. better when my team is better and they know more. Yep. Um, so I hope that's our goal is to, is to hope that people and that organizations mm -hmm. can see that as an importance. And, you know, there, the association can be a lot of work and it can mm -hmm. be overwhelming and it can be, you know, 
this year I'm probably spending 20 to 25% of my time with association business. Mm -hmm. Um, but you can pick and choose like what you want to be a part of. I can't right now, but, um, um, (laughs) yeah, (laughs) but, uh, but you can pick and choose and you can, you know, determine your level of involvement, but utilizing it to the best of your ability to benefit you, um, is, is a a purpose to get involved, but it's also to preserve our way of life Mm -hmm. because there's not a whole lot of good press about multifamily. Mm -mm. And so we don't tell our own story very well. We do not. No. And so if we are not, advocating and doing things in a positive way, then we're just the greedy landlords. Mm -hmm. And so it's important that we have strong associations that can fight that battle for us, that can provide education, that can, you know, send the message that we need Mm -hmm. um, because it's, you know, it it won't be long before there are things that take over and um, make our way of life challenging. Um, I also think it's interesting about the impact it can have on just your perception of the industry as a whole. You know, I, I think for me, I had the advantages of going, uh, well, I, when I started with ECI, Phil Carlock was the president, or was the chairman of NAA. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I kind of, that was, I was backwards. I really had more exposure back at then mm-hmm. at that level. Yep. But man, how eye-opening was that? I mean, if I hadn't already been convinced this was a career, because yeah, I, t- I, I flirted with the idea of going back to school, you know, and finishing, mm-hmm. I only had a year left. But I didn't. Mm -hmm. And I think that being engaged with, and you guys have such a large, the largest in the universe association, (laughs) but understanding the the scope, the size, the magnitude of the rental housing industry and what we contribute might be the very thing to have someone just re-engage and really understand the investment they need to make in themselves or why this is a worthwhile career to to stick in and and dive in, you know, dig into. Um, You know, there are companies out there that unfortunately maybe are not, like you said, for whatever reason, are not as um, supportive. Um, Would you say for somebody who's, and I can't remember, some of the classes, obviously, that you pay for. Mm -hmm. um, And then there's sometimes there's a a fee for participating with various events. Yes. What's your advice for somebody who who is in a company that maybe is not budgeted for that? It it is... It is a challenge because it requires, sometimes it requires you to take PTO time because mm-hmm. they're not going to let you have the time off. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is going to sound awful, but you've got to evaluate where you want to be in your career. I mean, that's the bottom line. And if if you are with a company that doesn't have your shared values on what a career means for you, then you're at the wrong company. Yep. And maybe you're at the wrong company now mm-hmm. and you can, you know, you can find another company or you can plead your case. You know, I, Anytime I need something from an owner and I want something, I, you know, I say, this is why we need it. This is how much mm-hmm. it costs. And this is what we're willing to give. And, mm-hmm. you know, this is what your return on investment is. And so I think it's, it behooves you to also understand what your return on investment is. And that's going to involve, you know, the next committee is the future leaders. They're under 40. Mm-hmm. And a lot of the events they host are off hours, either happy hour time mm-hmm. or mornings, like 830 to 930. So it gives them an opportunity to come on their own time. Mm-hmm. And if you're willing to invest your own time, my nexters, like they invest their own time in these, then I am more than willing to give them time off to do ones that are on my time. Right. And so I see that also too as a partnership with your employees, mm-hmm. right? If I have somebody that's only interested in going to TAA every year because they are off for three days, then I'm probably not as supportive if they're not mm-hmm. contributing to the organization. And that's the other part of it is that, yes, there is some benefit to being there um, from from you personally, but it's also you giving back. And like mm-hmm. I said with education, for me, education is solidifying my knowledge. Mm-hmm. And it should be the same thing for individuals in that servant leadership position. You know, yep. you have an opportunity to share with others your knowledge, to grow them in a way that makes, you know, I would not be where I am today if it wasn't for the relationships that I fostered because of education. I can't tell you the number of people that have said, oh, yeah, you taught my class in 1990, mm-hmm. you know, and I'm like, oh, let's not talk about that. <laughs> I don't think it was, not, couldn't have, it could not have been 1990 for the record. <laughs> Excuse me, yes, but yeah, I mean, a, a great deal of people that work for me were ones that came to my training mm-hmm. classes and were like, I'd love to work for you. Okay, so... And, and my, I think the only thing I would add to that is if, if you are not in an environment where, um, if it's outside of, of work hours, invest in yourself, mm-hmm. you know, because if it, there's so many 
amazing things about this industry and the career opportunities are endless. We always need good people. Yes. Um, but we need experienced people who get results and results matter. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think one of the things that, I, you know, I found so beneficial was the people that I met coming up through the ranks. Um, Cause I, I, I have been fortunate enough to participate sometimes push on, on, like you said, on my own time. Mm -hmm. um, but man, when things were hard, even as a property manager, I remember reaching out to people I met because of the association events yes. that have been there, done that. Like you don't have to figure everything out the hard way. And right. this industry is so great about sharing knowledge, Yes, you know, and even like you said, it, it what seems clickish is not, they're just a closeness, mm -hmm. but I have yet to meet anyone that wasn't willing to welcome everyone else in. I mean, that it's multi, I mean, I don't think that's why they started the name multifamily, right. but it, it is what we are, right? We're family. Totally. Um, we and just, suppliers, like you mm -hmm. wouldn't think that part of it, but the suppliers to me are almost more welcoming than the, than the management folks. Oh, I'm going to agree to that. Cause a lot of them had been on a lot of my suppliers as a property manager and a regional manager had been on my side of the fence at one point yes. as an operator. Mm -hmm. um, they had some of the best advice mm -hmm. about how to look at the business and maybe it was different perspective from being on the other side. Yes. So yeah, I totally agree with that. Mm -hmm. And with each other, you know, a, a carpet supplier is taking a carpet supplier to meet an owner because, mm -hmm. you know, because this person says, Hey, I'd really like to meet this person, you know, <laughs> To me, that's astonishing, you yeah. know, shocking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So once we've, we've all, we're all in agreement now, we're going to get engaged. We're going to show up for some committee meetings. Yes. Um, you know who's counting on you? You. Just saying. It's time to get active. Yes. So now that I'm, I'm, I'm there and I'm, you know, I, I sit in in my first meetings and there's committee engagement. What should someone expect when they're engaging with a committee and they sign up to be on a committee? Um... They should expect to be called upon to perform, <laughs> right? <laughs> Results matter. And it is a volunteer organization that's driven by volunteer work. Mm -hmm. So depending on how big the association is, I learned I was, I'm in uh, the National Apartment Association Lyceum class right now, and there's a girl from Idaho, and Idaho has no apartment association. They're just now venturing out on their own. Mm -hmm. They've been sharing with Utah. So Idaho, I guess, has been going into Utah's, and so now Idaho is making their own apartment association. Hmm. And, you know, we take I it for granted. That. Right, yeah. yeah. I mean, we take it for granted, the the setup that we have in Texas, because it's, you know, um, and so depending on what size of your organization is, it's driven by volunteers. And you mm -hmm. may have a staff at the apartment association that helps facilitate some of that, that goes up the chain. Um, but in order for things to get done, in order for events to happen, in order for training to happen, we need volunteers to help. Yeah. And so, you know, to come to a committee meeting and say I'm on this committee means nothing if you're not performing. It's just like work. Mm -hmm. And um, so you need to expect to be asked to do something and to give some of your time. Yep. And to get results. Yes. And, and follow through. Yes. I mean, <laughs> yes. When we're every year when we look at new members of the board or when we're looking at committee, you know, or we're looking at awards or 40 under 40 or whatever those things are that we're looking at. Um, you know, people are watching, people are looking. And when you say, Hey, I've been involved with the industry for 20 years. And I'm like, well, I've never seen her at a committee meeting. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, it's one thing just to, to say I'm a part of the association and it's another to give your fair share to mm -hmm. the association to be, you know, to be better and to be greater and to help and to do all those things. So if you're going to do it, then, you know, just do it. Don't be lukewarm. Like yeah. lukewarm is the worst you can be. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And people are counting on you. Yeah. And it's rewarding too. Yes. Yeah. And you know what? You may decide it's not for you. Mm -hmm. absolutely right and that's you, okay yeah that is absolutely okay it, but you can contribute in other ways with your pack dollars <laughs> yes and legislative you know anybody that's kind of dabbling into legislative issues it's a great way to kind of see what's going on and to support your your idea I have an owner that is having some challenges the mayor decided they weren't going to support a public housing situation and they were going to cancel the the thing and he was right in the middle of a PSA and he's like hey we're putting this on pause because the mayor blah 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 and I was like, well, guess what? This is a perfect opportunity for you to join the pack because mm -hmm. we have a relationship with the mayor and this may be a great opportunity for yeah. us to bridge that gap. So you don't realize the relationships mm -hmm. that the things that it could affect by you being involved in the association. Amen. You're mm -hmm. so that's you couldn't have said that any better. It's amazing the things, the opportunities and the experiences that will come out of association engagement that you could never have. You just never thought it would happen. Yes. Or never could have uh, anticipated. Mm -hmm. yeah. And don't, and I don't want to say this in a bad way, but, you know, then, you know, don't only realize the benefits to you. Realize the benefits to all of us in general, mm -hmm. right? And so 
oh, yeah, well, I'll join PAC if he can help me. No, that's not what this is about. This is about our industry in general helping and making sure that we're not spending money on, you know, sprinklers that nobody can afford, right? So, um, you know, it it is giving and it is – it does take up your time and it's a, a decision that, that I think it, it's, it's been instrumental in my career. Yep. Um, and Mine I too. can't speak highly enough about, about how supportive they have been to of, mm-hmm. of the industry. And it's not all great. You know, I've, we've disagreed about some things and, um, but you know, they're not there to mediate. They're there to support the industry in general. Yep. And you, the <clears throat> network that you have mm-hmm. is, you know, I, I don't, I can't imagine where I'd be without that, the network. That's oh, why. Yes. I'm I'm so glad that, like I said, I'm a groupie. I'm a fangirl here. Yes. So let's talk about your progression. Mm-hmm. So once you are an advisory, um, wait, advisory member, yes, advisory I member. That's what it's called. Um, and then you have three years from that point that you become a president. Oh uh, no, no, no. So advisory <laughs> is yeah, no, 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 <laughs> no, no. That that's no. This is twelve years later. Um, so advisory oh, that's board. An important clarification. Yes, twelve years later. So uh, advisory board member, and then. You know, you're being monitored, and I don't want to say monitored, but you know, your level of commitment and involvement determines mm-hmm. your future with the organization. Okay. If you're not engaged and you're not active, then you know, you you may not be. They may not ask you to be a board member. So there is a board selection process. It's a, a committee that meets and thinks about who's going to be on the board, and mm-hmm. and there are requirements. You have to attend board meetings. You have to you know vote. You have to do those things. So, mm-hmm. um, I would say from the time they you are you're sought after or they they see you or you express interest Mm -hmm. Um, from that time. And this is on the management side. The supplier partner side is different, different. which we'll talk about. But on the management side, um, you could be on the board forever and never be on the executive board. Um, Because just like within an organization, there's certain things that, you know, moments in time that that positions are needing to be filled. So Mm -hmm. an example is, you know, during COVID, there was a certain set of skills we were looking for in the leadership. Mm -hmm. And that maybe wasn't, you know, um, maybe that wasn't fun event planning at the time. Maybe mm-hmm. this the skill set we were looking for on the executive board was more technology based mm-hmm. and, you know, getting in touch with people in a certain way. Like what does the organization need at that particular moment in time is who they determine kind of moves up that ladder. OK, so every association is different how that works. But um, it, once you're on the executive board, it can take anywhere from four four years at the minimum Mm -hmm. to seven years um, to be, to advance through the presidential um, area. So I was on the board. um, uh, Vice president at large is the position that we have. There's four of those. And then from those four, you're selected to go up. So two, three, four, five, it's been six years that I have been on the executive board, not knowing if I'd be president or not. I've known in the last three years, but I served for three years just as a VP at large, yep. helping in any just way that I could. Just giving your time, right. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, uh, before that, I was on the board for 10 years. Okay. So when you found out. Yeah. So I'm just curious, the mindset, when you realize three years from now, you're going to be the HAA president. Yes. I thought, wow, I could screw this up. Because <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've, I've got to imagine that you're like, yes, and you're excited because you love the industry. But then there's that next thought. It's like, oh, my gosh, I'm responsible for HAA's progression or you know, whatever the, you know, I don't even know what you would yeah. think, to be honest. Like, yeah, well, there's a lot of things that you don't know. I mean, you know, there's, there's, I've learned in the last couple of years, and it depends on what the leadership looks like ahead of you. I was very blessed to have, you know, some amazing people ahead of me that very much wanted, you know, they, their vision of what the organization was going to be in the future mm-hmm. was spread. And we've had a, sol- you know, a solid message moving through. You're always going to have, you know, we've, we've had presidents in the past that weren't really interested in all that. They weren't interested in developing the organization. They mm-hmm. were like, the board will take care of that. I'm just the president. But, you know, m- most of the last 10 years, they've had a vision on what is important mm-hmm. to them. You know, you see weaknesses in the organization. You see weaknesses in multifamily that you want to solve. Mm-hmm. And so um, you don't know very much as a board member. Like when you get on that executive track is when you start learning about things that, oh, you know, this is a this is something that we're lacking that we need to work on. Hmm. Um, PAC involvement is a good one. You know, right. advocacy um, has been really advocacy and education are the top two things that I really care about. And um, seeing education grow was always important. I was like, we are the largest organization, the largest association in the universe. 
and we need stronger education. Like we're a university. We have a university budget. What are we doing to support that? Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, as you move through the organization and it's important that you give to different areas so that you can see the areas Mm -hmm. that you can, you know, contribute or help. Okay. And, um, you know, like I, I'm, I've been on the financial committee, but that is not where I strive. Like I want to work on education. And Mm -hmm. so you make sure that you have people on the board that can serve those needs. So three years ago would have been the start of 20. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Crazy. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. When COVID hit, I was a vice president at large, meaning the one of four. And we had uh, Clay Hicks was the president at the time. And we immediately he immediately put together a COVID task force Mm -hmm. and we were meeting twice a week for six months. Yeah. So we had 46 meetings via Zoom every Tuesday and every Friday for, you know, half the year. Yeah. And that's that was true leadership. Right. Mm -hmm. Like and it was people from small management companies, big management companies, supplier partners. We all were getting together twice a week and saying, what are we seeing? How can we Mm -hmm. help? Are you closed? Are you open? What's your form? What does this look like? And so the vice presidents at large were um, were providing feedback. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, at that time, everyone was considering, like, what do we need going Mm -hmm. forward in the next three years? So the president, the the. A president elect and the treasurer secretary were evaluating like where do we see the organization going, just like you do with your normal company, right. and what skill with so set much do we need? Certainty at that time. Yes. Wow. Where are we going to be? What are yeah. we going to need? And so as we weren't meeting, you know, mm-hmm. we weren't meeting anymore. We were all remote, and so I'm guessing that they probably came together and were like, "What are we going to need? We're going to need somebody that can lead us and unite us when we have to come back together." So during that time, I'm just curious. Did you see? Because of COVID, was there a, a increase in membership? Um, there was. It was pretty stagnant. Okay. Um, but we were all we were, we were adapting. We hadn't, you know, Houston was lacking in um, online availability of classes. Everything mm-hmm. was in person, and so we that kind of changed our trajectory to do more. Um, yeah, I, Zoom meetings. Well, I could do with everyone. Yeah. Right? But I wondered about that too because I would think that everybody, if you're not a member, you there could have been a time any more important than needing to have and that understand how system. other people were doing things, what was working, what wasn't. So yes. um, that time for me, especially because you know we were fairly new in in Q10, like we, like we didn't know what we were doing, right? We didn't have a manual for that. Yeah, nobody did, by the way. Right, <laughs> and so we were like, "What are the big people doing? And do we want to do that? Do we not want to do that?" You know, we all made dumb decisions, and we all made good decisions, and so that COVID task force was one of the best experiences of my life to share information and to be to have that network mm-hmm. of people that I could talk to, and yeah. those have helped me with you know other challenges with the company. You know, I can call Clay and be like, "Hey, Clay, did, you know, what is this about? What are you doing?" You know, he's a great guy. Yes, he really yeah. is. Super smart. Yes, he is. Mm-hmm. And John Boriak is another one. I mean, John Boriak is the youngest uh, Houston Department Association president ever, and just brilliant. Mm. Um, and he he taught me a lot about life. Life work balance. Mm-hmm. And he, you know, takes advantage of the team member that he had teams that he has. And so and set a lot of things in place for HAA that have that have helped us, you know, job descriptions for officers. Okay. Mm, well, Super helpful. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I would never had it before. Wow. So we would go up that ladder not knowing what we were really in for. Like, am I supposed to go to the meeting? Am I not supposed yeah. to go? Oh wow. Did great for setting expectations. Yeah. That's transformational. Yes. <laughs> it's transformative, transformational. It is one too. Um, time period for the, the association. Then. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, you're lucky to be part of that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was just seeing how that, I mean, everything that we went through with COVID was great for everyone, right? Like we all were, learned a great deal. There was positives, negatives, but um, to have that environment of leaders yeah. available at my disposal is probably one of the reasons why we've been successful at Q10. Yeah. Which just reinforces your earlier point about so the impact of being engaged. All right. So, Madam President. <clears throat> yes. So, as your time was approaching, mm-hmm. how did you how do you prepare for that? Do you have a, a, a plan, a, a Stephanie plan <laughs> for 2023? Yeah. And, like, how did that come about? Like, what what's in – I have, like, too many questions. This was, I told you I was fangirling. And here it comes. <laughs> it's like, I want to do this. I want to know that. And how did you do this? Yeah. But in reality, like – how did it, it work? Yeah, it's such a big responsibility, and I can't think of anyone better because you were you're truly passionate about it and just hearing what you've had to say. But you know, 
Um, you know, Christy Rodriguez, um, who's with Judwin and had, mm -hmm. you know, done time with various organizations was ahead of me and she's, you know, full of energy and was, did a great job of engaging me in the process. Like you could have leaders that don't engage anybody and just mm -hmm. go about their business, but she was very much like, Hey, this is what's happening and you need to learn about this and help, help me down, down the, the road. The other thing about associations is that you know, you are volunteering. And so while this is a great responsibility, I've been volunteering at a high level for HAA for a long time. Mm -hmm. So for some people, this may seem like a lot, but you know, I, you've already continued. Yes. I mean, it was just the natural, I was like, oh, okay. So it's about 10% more than I'm already giving. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, but for some people that have never, you know, we certainly have people on the board that were like, what I got to do what? Like, you know what I mean? Being a member is different than mm -hmm. serving in that capacity. So for me, it wasn't that big of a challenge, but um, I prepare, I, I was preparing my team mainly because I mm -hmm. do run my own company, which is not, you know, s some of these people work for other people. And so they have to get permission to do things. And I didn't, mm -hmm. but I've got to fill, I mean, I'm running my company, so I've got to fill those gaps. So my, my focus and my preparation was getting my team ready for taking on the responsibility of me not being there all the time. Mm -hmm. Um, so that was my main focus. And then from, uh, an, a, an apartment association, I had kind of identified the things that were nagging me that I was like, we've got to work on this or we've got right. to work on that. So it was easy for me to say, we've got to grow education and we've got to grow legislation. Like we've mm -hmm. got to work on those two things. Um, and I just decided this, this is what I want to work on. And, you know, secretly. Um, it's not a secret now. If right. You're tell us. <laughs> yes. Um, you know, as a president, we don't really do that much, right? Mm -hmm. Like we can provide feedback and we can do things, but you know, it's a board vote. And so, mm -hmm. Um, you know, I can provide feedback and I can suggest things, but the board's going to vote. And if the board votes and we put on our case, then that's great. But um, it remains a strong association built from years and years of people mm -hmm. donating their time and volunteering. And, you know, I, I say this like corny, but the state of our association is strong because of the leaders before us. Mm -hmm. And so all I can hope and Christy, like we say this, is that we just hope that we can keep the bench strong so that into the future we we can be as solid as we are now. Yeah, no, that's important. Because there are lots of associations that are making it, right? Yes. Like association involvement and volunteerism is yep. down overall. Yeah, and I think because of the pandemic, yes. getting out of sight, out of mind a little bit. Yes. So how do we remain strong? Yeah. What is your responsibility as a president? Is it about the, uh, like what from my side we call brand amplification and brand mm -hmm. credibility, right? Yes. You're out there to drive engagement and membership mm -hmm. um do you take a leading role when you are trying to present something to your board yes so i run the board meetings we handle the votes okay. you know the parliamentary procedure if you will mm -hmm. um we have executive meetings uh once a month where we talk about budgets and events that are happening and um dues increases and um you know challenges that we're seeing in the market um uh legislative issues so mm -hmm. um all of that, uh, we, you know, we talk about all of that and kind of seek executive board approval. Um, we also have a huge investment opportunity and responsibility because, you know, we have a savings account or an, an investments mm -hmm. that we have to monitor and we have to make sure that the that we can afford the things that that make things happen. It's it's a you know because we're so large, we have a large budget. Mm -hmm. We are a nonprofit, but that doesn't mean that we need to lose money. So um, handling all of those and working with the staff is important and all that. So yeah. kind of an advisory role. Um, I take press opportunities. So I represent us at meetings and those sorts of things. Um, Does that mean you would, do you, do you go down in front of the city council if necessary? If necessary, or? yep. Um, have you done that? Um, I have not gone to city council. I usually try to delegate that responsibility. <laughs> How does that be the one that would be like, <laughs> whoo. Yes. I misspoke once on yes. the when we were part of the rent tracker uh, project with NMHC, and uh, that was a great thing to be part of. Oh my god, I was nervous. I, I've never been in front of a when I saw and this I've learned I don't do this anymore. I made the one mistake of on our our Zoom meeting or whatever I think it was Zoom that they had, but you could see how many people were on. Oh yeah, don't look. Oh, I looked. I yes. should have looked. And then I realized, and you could see their names and what like press they're with. I, I'm not, that was the first time I've ever done it. I'm just going to own it. I was, I was nervous as hell, oh, and yeah. I misspoke. Thank God Sarah Yossi from NMHC corrected me on my behalf. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was like, yes, that's what I meant to say. Yeah, Because, man, they jumped on it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, having a support system that can yes. – so I have not testified, but I've done – you know, I've done the Laura Ingram show. I have I handle a lot of the <gasps> – Have you really? I have. I didn't know that. Yes. Oh, my goodness. Yes, it was very interesting. 
um, I'm, you know, my personal beliefs tend to be a little different than mm-hmm. my, um, a, you know, conservative liberal. Um, and so I generally, they usually call on me to handle more of the liberal media mm-hmm. <laughs> than the conservative media. And so when they called me and said, at NAA called me and said, hey, um, Laura Ingram has called us and, you know, we think you would be perfect. I was like, oh, hell no. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I was like, she's crazy. And, and they were like, yeah, we know. But if you can handle the liberals, you can handle her, you know. <laughs> so I said, give me a minute. Let me think about it. Um because you're always afraid, right, that yep. they're going to say something that's going to throw you off and you're going to sound like a greedy landlord. And so yep. um, I think it helps, too. And I, I, this is going to be in in history, but um, I think it helps that I'm a female in a, what, you know, generally you see white males running mm-hmm. real estate organizations. And I think it helps to have a voice that's female that can provide a different, you know, different mm-hmm. perspective to people so that they see that we are. Um, diverse in yes. our leadership. Yep, and and the differences too between professional management. That's the one thing I, I did. I noticed throughout the Rent Tracker project, and you know, it's funny. I've become friends with Jeff Adler at Yardy, and uh, we would talk about it. And they have some different data sets, and really the difference between professionally managed units and the small landlord, and that that's why we have to be engaged because yes. we're often associated with the actions of the small landlord. Yes, and. The professionally managed are good stewards of the community and they do give back and they do we do so many great things but we don't do a good job of telling that part of the story Correct. or i and i actually sometimes caution that i i think we could do a better job of telling our story but i also don't know that we always get the opportunity to tell no. our side of the story yeah i mean there has to be a bad guy right yep. i mean there has to be a bad guy and so you know it doesn't matter what there side is one it. it's called regulation yes <laughs> It's in yes. our way. It's in the way of progress and more affordable units. Yes, absolutely. That's another podcast, though. <laughs> yes, yes. At the end of this year, um, after serving, well, do you serve a second? Do you s- no, one year term. Okay. And I think it's because you're so tired. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine. Um, what if you if we leap forward to January of next year when you're up there on on the stage like Christy was? Mm-hmm. Um, what what would be success for you for your year as HAA's president? Um. To light a fire under people to get engaged. Like okay. for me, it's all about engagement and and letting people see the benefits of being involved in sharing. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, we I have a goal for PAC. You know, I talk to Madison, who's in charge of that all the time. We want 250 members, you know, mm-hmm. for PAC, which is the largest we would ever have. And we're very, very close. Um, that would be success for me, seeing just that PAC involvement and keeping that um, that engine going. The other part that I really struggle with is that we have we have turned to a supplier partner dominated organization rather than an owner managed organization and so i'm really working as hard as i can to get more engagement on the ownership mm-hmm. developer management side of things mm-hmm. because you know when we go to dc or when we go to the hill we're talking to people in, and they want ownership yep they want to know the professional the professionals that are you know running the organization and the supplier partners are important but ultimately they provide a service and mm-hmm. they're here because they make money right by doing it this is our investment you know i own properties mm-hmm. i'm an investor in properties and so that voice is important and mm-hmm. i think we've shifted a great deal and so success for me would would be engaging more management um, people to see the benefits of the association and not just yeah. Not just the supplier partners. No, I think you've got a point there. I remember one of the, lo- I don't remember, I can't remember what event it was. It was something out at Sneaky Peaks at one point. I just remember being one of the, f- it was, it was, um, the ratios were off. We'll just put it that way. Yeah. And trying to work my way around that bar. Um, Cause it was like, I think maybe it had been a dance floor or something, but it was literally a circle. Mm-hmm. And I remember who I was trying to get to, but it was, I, I, I know what you mean. You, yes. you don't want to feel as an operator like you're fresh meat. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and at that particular event, I'll never forget it. I remember it's like, I just, and I, and I loved them all. I love mm-hmm. my spires. Yes. I mean, it's part of why Resmond, it was so important for us to have that uh, open API when we first launched is I wouldn't be where I'm at without a lot of the spires who leaned in to help me with my mm-hmm. management company when times were tough in the great recession. So nothing, you need to love our suppliers. I am a supplier. We're an important part of the industry. But for me as a supplier, the flip side of that is, to go to events and just to have other suppliers to talk to is not good either. Yes, absolutely. And, you know, so <clears throat> finding a way to increase engagement. Yeah, we can brainstorm on that because if there's anything we can do to help. And I actually, without knowing that was your initiative, kind of mm-hmm. thought that this was what we could do with this podcast. Yes. Um, so we'll share this far and wide because if we can get more engagement and, and help with our future leaders. But 
get those owner operators engaged um, because they are all benefiting from everyone, everyone else's work. And it is, Mm -hmm. I think now more than ever, it's time to step up and it's time to do your part. And that's where the ROI on association membership belongs, right? That's why we're really working in Houston to have a clear message of what that return on investment is to be a part of the association. What does that look like? What am I getting besides a lease? Mm -hmm. What am I getting besides, you know, I'm getting those. And and it's also challenging because a lot of what we do is unspoken. You know, Mm -hmm. we don't say, hey, we're talking to the mayor secretly about blah, 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 right? Yeah. That isn't things that we publicize. But, you know, the relationships that we have are are important behind Mm -hmm. the scenes because Mm -hmm. we can find out about things before they happen. And sometimes the things that we that don't happen are more important than the things that do. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, Mm -hmm. great point. (laughs) Yes. And that's something people don't don't have any awareness of. So you're exactly right on Mm -hmm. that. We missed something and we, you know, we had a home run because we didn't get this legislation about a new city fee or we didn't get a something else. So those things are it's hard to deliver that message when a lot of things are things we can't talk about. Yeah, it is. Well, and I think, too, it's funny. We were talking about how to structure the Legislative Committee for Resmania. Um, and one of the things we're doing different this year is we're having, uh, um, do you know Bobby Griffith? Uh-huh. Yes. <laughs> He's quite charismatic. Yes. Um, but, you know, New Mexico dealt with a lot of things they never thought they would deal with in New Mexico and successfully battled them mm-hmm. um, so that they could still provide quality housing because that's really what the impact would have been. Yes. Um, and so I've invited him. Good. So he's coming to speak. Awesome. Um, but he's coming from that perspective about how engagement materializes and what it can mean for your assets and for our livelihood. And that was kind of the thinking is with the middle management and our frontline associates. They're part of this industry. This is their livelihood. And so many of them have no idea yes. what's at stake. Yeah. But they all vote. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I a don't simple, know. A simple, you know, you think it's no big deal that something's going to get passed, but then implementing that like let's just talk about carbon monoxide detectors like what does that mean when Mm -hmm. they say all you know all federally backed housing has to have a a carbon monoxide detector it seems like nothing but when you look at in the scheme of things that's over a million dollars invested in that one thing to get into those units and right so Mm -hmm. those simple things bringing it down to the on-site team and letting them know the importance of that I think those those little things are important because all they see is craziness on the news yeah that's all they see and they don't really realize how that one thing could affect them. So during that session, I'm going to have you sit up front. Okay. I'm I'm thinking, ask as the HAA president, I might just, you know, when it's Q&A time, I'm yes. just telling you in advance. <laughs> I am happy to, because, to help. Um, I don't know if you know this, but there's a lot of your members in that audience. Yes. Because I already know who's coming. <laughs> good, 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 good. So, yeah. Good so you're gonna market. Get, yeah, you're going to get your chance. It's like, okay. all right, people, it's time for you to step up. Do your part. Yes. And I will bring PAC membership applications with me. Okay. All right. I was going to say, count on it. It's yes. a done deal because I'm working on this Good. like it's, outline next week. <laughs> yeah. It's it's super important. And it's hard to keep people engaged when there's not something, you know, catastrophic affecting us, right? Like who would have thought that we would have had an eviction moratorium that was <laughs> like passed by a real estate mogul, right? Like no one would have ever thought Mm-mm. that that they, everyone would have thought, oh, you know, a Democrat in office would have done that. But a real estate investor was part was behind the eviction moratorium. Like no one would have thought that it happened. So yeah. if that's a perfect example of you never know what yeah. can happen that can affect our industry and is still affecting our industry because we still have the CARES Act in place. Oh, that's right. Because mm-hmm. I know that was a big talking point for Advocate. Yeah, still there. We still have to give 30 day notices on every single federally backed loan. It has not been rescinded. Hmm. And so... We're, you know, way past the pandemic, right? Mm -hmm. Um, And so what does that look like? The ramifications of that one thing will be in effect as as long as... For years to come. For years to come. Yeah. And just the backlogs that it's caused in in and of itself. Yes. Oh, my goodness. And that's a material impact. Mm -hmm. Squeezes budgets. Yeah. And then when you have no budgets, it affects other things like payroll. It's all (laughs) all related to affordable housing. Yep. We can't continue to deliver any sort of affordable housing if we if we can't make up for the cost mm-hmm. of lost rent. So, yeah. well, and then now with the bill of rights, mm-hmm. renters bill of rights is being, you know, negotiated and mm-hmm. talked about, you know, I think there's a lot that we should be learning and, and we should be making our voices heard. So, mm-hmm. all right, well, I know where you're sitting. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there's going to be a special spot just for you. Um, well, I think, like I said, I just thank you for sharing your, you know, insights and your story. 
um, and helping us understand what it means to be engaged with the association. You did a great job, by the way. Thank you. Thank you. And um, just like as a note, which I know that you know, you know the supplier journey is a little different. Yes. So, you know, getting involved on the supplier side with your PSC, Product Service Council, is important too because yeah. it's a different journey and it's equally important um, and they're equally important in the industry. So um, the apartment industry is all of our livelihoods. Yes. And yes. it's all tied together. Mm -hmm. So. Well, um, I hope I hope that those of you that are watching um, feel a little inspired, understand that nothing worth having comes without effort and nothing really worth having comes free. So if you really want to do your part, you can get out there and help support the industry. Yes. And go engage with your local affiliate. Um, get, you know, if it interests you, get on a committee, but uh, your time will be well spent. And we're both products of, of having great relationships and networking that have come out of our our time spent there so um thank you again for sharing yes um i hope you're having a wonderful year as ha president thank you it's been fun it's it, already four months out i feel like oh my gosh like it's going so quickly but it's, we're gonna be in may before you know it. i know it's crazy so, yep it's rapid and if and if anybody is you know uh, interested in the association work i know you're available mm -hmm. i'm available like reach out and we can help yes. anybody through that path yes we will all right, guys. Well, thank you again. I hope you enjoyed it. I know I did. Yeah, and and uh, I'm like, Ooh, I want to, well, I'm already engaged, but right. I just want to be more engaged now. <laughs> yes. Well, thank you. It's been fun. All right, guys. We'll see you next time. And uh, thanks for joining us. Bye. Thanks. Bye.